尊敬尊敬的各位来宾、各位专家，大家好。Urban、uh, or city clusters development in China. Mr. Zhang mentioned some points. I will give you some whole process introduction. So the first, China's city clusters are the most economically developed areas of China. In 21 clusters, they account for GDP. 90% of the total GDP of China, 60% of the population are living in the 21 clusters of China, especially Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei, Yangtze River Delta region and the Po River Delta region. These three area clusters, 4% of the territory have 20% population and 38. Point percent uh, GDP, so you can see the economically prosperous area. And uh, for second, for China's the pattern, you can see the coastal area and also Longhai, Luanxin Railway, and uh, Yangtze River. So we have this kind of areas, all, all lines are the major areas for the clusters, they are mainly uh, located in these three axes. So for the spatial development or spatial deployment, we have said uh, we have more in east and less in west. And also they are more dispersed in western part. So for the maturity of the clusters, and uh, from east, east west to east to west, the economic prosperity is reducing. So the maturity is reducing from east to west. So for the west part of the clusters, they are still in the initial stage. In the beginning stage, you can see the Yangtze River Delta region clusters. So we can see for many, there are some core cities. They have the, the metropolitan area, and they have covered different provinces. So it's quite mature clusters in Yangtze River Delta region clusters. And uh, what is the status quo of the traffic uh, for those kind of clusters in China? So they have six characters. First, uh, the traffic or transportation pattern are different in different clusters. The east clusters, they are more mature for the tra transportation systems. So they are shifting to a grid system of transportation. And uh, they are building a great network for the transportation. For the west part, west clusters, city clusters, they are still have a strong dominant uh, core cities. So they just have a hub and a radiation, or hub and a radiation or spoke system for pattern. So second characteristic is. Uh, so most of the clusters develop themselves along the major traffic line. So for the cluster line, develop, they're just developing toward, directed to the major traffic line, like in Beijing, Tianjin, and Hubei, like uh, alongside Beijing, Guangzhou Railway. So we have Beijing, Guangzhou, Be Beijing, Xingtai, Hongzhan, Baoding and Shijiazhuang all together five cities. These five cities account for more than half of the GDP of this area. So the next, uh, so the railway is uh, playing a big role in the traffic system. For example, in the Yaozi River Delta region and Pearl River Delta region, between the different cities, they have strong connections. We have intercity railways. We have, they have uh, mo quite more communication between those cities. And number four is. Uh, because uh, clusters are developing alongside some traffic line, so transportation lines. So for the clusters, they are also working as a hub for transportation. And number five is uh, the clusters have higher integration of transportation, especially for east cluster in China. For the east cluster in China, between different cities, we have very strong connectivity and uh, mobility. They are better in the western clusters in the integration of the traffic and transportation. Number six, you want to coordinate, have better coordination between the cities inside the clusters. So for the clusters, they have a mechanism to cover the whole region, the whole cluster. 
faster to ensure the synergy, to ensure the collaboration between the different cities. This is a major characteristic of Chinese clusters. For the future, for the future trend, the are the following characters for the future trend. The first is high growth. Because China city clusters different from Western city clusters, we are still in the rapid development stage. Different from the Western countries, Western clusters are still already in the mature stage. And China's clusters, based on our prior forecasting, every year there will be many more people enter into the new clusters. So in the future, the cluster in China, we will still have big demand increase. And second, the high density. So the high density, Inside the clusters, alongside the traffic traffic line or transportation line, there will be more and more demand, more and more dense population there. We have the intercity transportation, we have transit, we have the intercity, we have the, uh, the, 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 the transportation within the city or the intercity. So high demand. The third is high efficiency. For the future cluster in China, we have good demand, big demand. We have the long, long distance and the short distance. Uh, for the distance, middle distance and short distance, uh, shorter than 200 kilometers will be the major demand. So we may need to focus on that demand for the less than 200 kilometers travel demand. And uh, next uh, feature trend is balanced. So. For some western, west in China's west, China's west uh, clusters, they are they are still monocentric, and uh, they will become more and more mature. They will become polycentric, so they will have more balanced, uh, and demand of the transportation will also be more balanced. Fifth aspect is the diversity of the demand on transport. I wouldn't go into details because it's quite obvious. Number six is about intensive development. This is also against China's reality because China has a dense uh, population and has a lot of uh, pressure on these cities. So that's why, of course, we wouldn't focus on private transport instead, and we will pursue a more intensive uh, public transit. That's definitely the trend in the future. So the above mentioned are the six development trends. Next, I would like to talk about our thoughts over the transport integration in Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei urban agglomeration. It covers 13 uh, cities and well for Beijing, Tianjin and there are municipalities and under the direct jurisdiction and while other cities and they are in the neighboring uh, provinces and it uh, covers an uh, big area and also this um, big area of uh, over 1,000 square kilometers and it's really a big area. Well, uh, this area is uh, one of the most advanced regions uh, in China so we can tell from the some fundamental data like this uh, highway, railway uh, network and the uh, are three times of the average in China and it has uh, the international uh, airport and the handling volume was about 86 million person times ranking number two in the world and we also have uh, uh, Tianjin port, Qinghuangdao port and Tangshan port as well as Huanghua port all together four ports uh, these are important port clusters in northern part of China well uh, among the top ten uh, ports, you know, Tianjin and the Tangshan port are all in this very region. So in terms of this uh, spatial distribution, um, you, you see that uh, in Jingguang area and the Jing, Beijing Tangshan is lying and these uh, regions are uh, featured by maybe the uh, busiest uh, transport and also Beijing with the surrounding cities like uh, Langfang and Baoding and has a very busy transport. Well, uh, in terms of the goods transport and we also have that between uh, Tianjin and, Jing and uh, Beijing and etc. And we have a very big volume of uh, goods transport 
So you can see, and especially those bulk commodities like coal transport, etc. Well, because um, Hebei and it's a very important port, and for the coal transport from north to south, and we have some. Uh, Problems and the first is that this uh, mono center uh, structure and uh, need to be further optimized. So you can see that all these uh, uh, networks, including the railway network and the highway network, and they are kind of uh, focusing on Beijing and radiating towards other uh, surrounding parts. So that's to say uh, the area surrounding Beijing and the connectivity maybe is not as high as that in Beijing, which will affect the efficiency. Second is uh, that the real trans transit is kind of underdeveloped, especially against such a big population. Now, Beijing, Tianjin, and these two important cities, um, as well as uh, other cities in Hebei province, has a very big demand on transport. Now. Many um, are going out uh, on road transport, so that's why and the efficiency has also been affected. Well, at the same time, um, between Beijing and Tianjin, and there, uh, and with the surrounding cities, and there is an insufficient uh, transport network. Well, many people and simply rely on their private cars instead of the public transit between these areas, so this will definitely affect the transport. A third problem is that the uh, coordinated coordination level is not high of these uh, uh, transport hubs. Well, Beijing and as a hub for transport, and it, it carry out a lot of uh, functions, like the hub of uh, goods transport, a pet, hub of uh, passenger transport, etc. Well, um, other surrounding areas like Tianjin and uh, areas in Hebei, and they haven't fully displayed their role of uh, transport. So that's to say, Beijing has shouldered a bigger responsibility and has borne a lot of uh, pressure. Well, uh, second is that um, the connection is not convenient between Beijing and other parts. For example, uh, between Beijing um, rail stations and also the southern stations, and now it took, uh, takes about 30 to 40 minutes. It's still a long time. And also for Beijing, Guangzhou, high-speed rail, and when it passed the uh, Shijiazhuang station, well, actually, uh, there is about uh, three kilometers uh, between the high-speed rail station and the uh, train station. So that's to say it's not uh, convenient at all and it will definitely affect the efficiency at the same time. Uh, fourthly, a fourth problem is about the um, integration of passenger transport and uh, freight transport. And the level of convenience is low. Well, we know that maybe in uh, Beijing, and there are administrative barriers, and also make it more difficult for the integration of this transport market. And we also have uh, difficulties in the coordination mechanisms, and which will f affect the efficiency of transport, such as the integrated transport market, and it's kind of difficult to coordinate. And another problem is that the information sharing is not adequate among these regions, and the management level is yet to be modernized. Well, um, sometimes it's difficult to realize this information sharing, uh, like this uh, uh, coordination, uh, management, and uh, the operational coordination are kind of, can, kind of low or not efficient. Well, now we still haven't had a very um, advanced governance on this uh, transport, and especially uh, for the private cars. And this has also resulted in the increasing um, pollution in these areas. And there, these are those prominent problems for the integration of transport in Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei. And for the future solutions, uh, I think the 
focus on three aspects. And first is about this network system. Second, to realize the smart management and followed by integrated services. And so that we can build a safe, convenient, high efficient, uh, env environment friendly and economic integrated transport system. To be more uh, specific, uh, first of all, and we need to improve this infrastructure network uh, based on the spatial pattern and the clusters system of uh, Tianjin, Hebei, uh, Beijing area, and we will continue to improve uh, its road transport and uh, railway transport. And we will also put forward the Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei on the rails, and like Mr. Zhang mentioned at the very beginning, because this is a uh, very important. Well, next, and we were also focusing on the core cities and the satellite cities surrounding it. Um, we will take into consideration about the commuting demand and the efficient transport, etc., so that we can further uh, improve on this uh, real uh, transit. We will also take into consideration the uh, commuting system between the center of the city with the suburban areas and to set up a fast and efficient uh, transport network. And we will also connect those different networks together uh, in terms of a real, real network, especially those intercity real network or transit. And we well facilitate its connection to the CBD area and also um, other air functional areas which has a higher demand and for efficiency of uh, transport in doing so and we can enhance the, the efficiency of the transport well, we also well uh, better connect to all these different networks in the city, and to have a bigger coverage. Second area, and we will also give better play or to those transport hubs to fully play their roles. Now, um, for Beijing, and it has a transfer some of its functions and to the surrounding areas such as Tianjin and Hebei. And there will be an optimized arrangement. Well, to be more specific, for Beijing, and it will weaken um, its role on this good transport hub. Well, for Tianjin, and it will strengthen its role of this uh, hub of goods and the hub of uh, passengers, etc. For cities like uh, Shijiazhuang and Baoding, and it will also strengthen its role of a uh, passenger uh, transport, etc., so that the efficiency could be greatly enhanced. And of course, uh, some ports and like these airports, and we would optimize their roles too. And there are altogether eight uh, ports, and in these uh, three city areas. Uh, like uh, Beijing International Airport and uh, Tianjin Binghai Airport and uh, Zhengding Airport in Shijiazhuang. And now uh, uh, we should uh, give a better positioning to these uh, airports. For example, for Beijing International Airport, its handling volume has exceeded 86 million. However, for Tianjin Airport, it's only half of that number. For Shijiazhuang Airport, it's even lower or less efficient. So how to coordinate and these the roles of these three airports and that will be um, the next step. Well, we will also strengthen um, Beijing's role and Beijing Airport's role and also uh, for Shijiazhuang Airport and it will uh, fully display its uh, low lower cost um, and regional hub of uh, its air uh, transport role. Well, uh, for this port area, now we still should give a better positioning because so far uh, there is not efficient coordination in place and their competitiveness hasn't been uh, fully displayed. So for Tianjin uh, port, and it should uh, position itself as an international uh, transport 
hub and also to uh, give impetus and to the logistics and transport etc well for Hebei I need to focus more on the transport of uh, commodities uh, like uh, that in energy the raw materials and uh, to share more about the port resources and thirdly and we should also provide better integrated transport services and we have those one bill system for freight one ticket system for passengers etc and through these smart ways and we can definitely and enhance the uh, integration um, and for these different cities in these areas and we should also enhance the information sharing among different departments so that we can provide a better uh, information uh, system for our passengers and then we can have a better comprehensive travel information service and uh, intermodal transport. Next, and we need to enhance um, and manage transport in a smarter way. Well, for uh, these three city uh, clusters and we have uh, this fr fragmented market and so how to break these uh, political administration barriers are very important then uh, we needed to consider and how to better use these uh, smart technologies and to build this uh, smart transport so we to have a one a blueprint for all these three cities and to have a information sharing uh, platform for all these cities and to set up a one network of uh, transport so that we can further enhance the efficiency in this area well, number five, and we should establish an effective coordination system or mechanism, which is of a great importance. Now, how to break these uh, administrative barriers, and it requires a very effective and efficient mechanism, and so that we can better integrate and this uh, public uh, transit. And finally, and we would we need to promote uh, the intensive low carbon development of transport. We should give priority to public transit, as I mentioned, and we should have an integrated transport safety management system. And also, we should have a green and a low carbon transportation in place. Well, these are the initial considerations and over these areas. Well, for is Tianjin, Hebei, Beijing, a cluster, and it's kind of very representative for city clusters in China, especially for these uh, clusters with uh, high administrative barriers. Uh, how can we better develop it? The experience we have uh, might shed the light on the development of other cities. So there are the following experiences. First, we need to handle um, the relationship between transport, the environment, and the transport, and the society, and handle this relationship well. And also about the transport, uh, it, and it, about this uh, optimal allocation of resources, and the comprehensive transport network building, and all this should be better coordinated. For next step, and we will focus more on this uh, the dot space and the two a space of network and to the space of flow and so that we better balance the relationship between the networks and the transport uh, arteries that's to say uh, we will further optimize the spatial patterns of the city and considering uh, the reality of the city and um, based on this transport arteries and we will uh, try to uh, build a more efficient network uh, so that we can uh, shorten further shorten the distance second and we will uh, make sure uh, there is a smooth connectivity just now I already mentioned this for example in such a big city and how to and based on um, this city and transport network and how can we uh, further shorten the distance, enhance the efficiency, and we also need to resort to um, the airport, the ports, um, and also 
uh, focusing more on the uh, clusters and the relationship with other clusters in the rest of the world. And third is about this network improvement. For example, we should take care of uh, um, these transport requirements in the uh, center of the city and also about this requirement and between these cities and the surrounding areas and also these satellite cities and uh, like the those in the small uh, cities and the towns because um, for all these different regions and they have a uh, different requirements for example, and we need to uh, focus more on building a uh, faster speed and a low cost to transport network building. And for the connection of the city center and the surrounding area or satellite cities, and we also should take it into consideration. That's to say different focuses or different requirements. And fourthly, and it's about this hub integration. For many uh, city clusters in China, and they have the ports and the airport together. Sometimes, and they don't have very clear positionings. Well, for the cities, and when they develop their ports and their airports, sometimes and they focus more on competition instead of cooperation. So, next step of work for us is that uh, based on the market development, and we will try to uh, realize um, uh, the optimization of this uh, division of roles among uh, these different, uh, like the seaports and uh, ports, airports, so that we can enhance the efficiency as a whole. And next then is about the service improvement. A service improvement has a lot to do and with the application of this uh, information and technology. I will give you an example, like uh, the commuting between Yanjiao, an area in Hebei province, and the center of Beijing. So we have built some infrastructure between these two parts. However, not many people take use those kind of infrastructure just because the service is not good enough. So infrastructure is one aspect, and the service is the other uh, aspect. So we need to build infrastructure, and also we need to improve the information. I, I mean service also. So finally, is the coordinated management for Chinese city clusters. We need to have coordination management mechanism for the whole area, whole cluster, so that each city's interest will be ensured. Uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you.